Hello and welcome to Transformation Now. Hi, I'm Rita Rocker, speaker, author, trainer with SoaringHigher.rocks. And I'm very happy to be back with you again. I'm going to be sharing some more information uh, from my book, Hope at the End of Your Rope, Steps to Rebuild Your Life. And I will be working on some uh, live programs as well. And uh, I have a workbook with this if you're interested. So I want to share the chapter called Sink, Swim, or Float, Surviving the Tidal Waves of Life. And we know that right now there's so much going on, literal tidal waves, things going on all over the world, a lot of uh, health, a lot of financial difficulties, a lot of trials and crises in the whole world. And so a lot of times we do feel like we're drowning, drowning in debt, drowning in sorrow, drowning in uh, devastating health issues, family issues, job issues, or lack of job issues. And so there are so many things that we just feel like sometimes I'm, I'm sinking. And I saw a beautiful picture the other day <clears throat> that I saved on my laptop, and it was showing like the hand, which I know is the hand of God, with a rope, and there was a person in like an ocean that was all upset and reaching up to grab the rope. And so that's basically what this book is about, is steps to rebuild your life. And so you're really hoping with, uh, you know, hanging on to the end of your rope. And so I want to be sharing that. It'll probably be, be about three or four programs before I finish with this one. And so one thing that Jim Rohn, who was a very famous motivator and inspirational speaker, uh, had once said is, you can't change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. And so it's like, okay, oh, this is a dead end. Oh, this is definitely the wrong path. It's really messing up my life. Oh my gosh, you know, look over here. I, I can't be around these people. I can't keep doing this type of job. So those are destinations that you don't want to go to, but we can change our direction to go, no, I'm not going this way anymore. This is not a good way for me. It's not a healthy way for me or my family, for instance. No, I am changing my direction. I'm turning around and I'm going to spend some time really thinking about where I need to go, what I need to do to go in that different direction so that I hit the destination that I was intended to have where I was meant to be. I'm finishing up on my fifth book, which uh, you can see from the background, is uh, Miracle in Your Mirror, Pursuing Your Passion at Any Age, because I really want to help people to also learn that it doesn't matter if you're younger or you're older. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm too young. Well, I'm going to be working with some high school students on gender roles and some issues like that, that I believe will really help them to understand the right direction to go in their lives and they're the right people, the right outlooks to have. And so think about that, even though the book was intended mainly for more mature people, because a lot of times we think, I'm too old, I've let my life go, everything's passed me by, now I, I, I can't do anything. No, you can pursue your passion at any age, whether you're 16 or you're 86 because you have the experience when you're older, the knowledge, you can share so much with the younger people. And one thing I hope to see coming up is more of the younger and the older people networking, communicating, sharing with each other what experiences that they're each going through and be a blessing to each other. A lot of times the younger ones can help with, uh, especially on <laughs> the technical level, where the older ones have a lot of experience that they can help the younger ones not have to go through so many of the things. You know, I see pictures from back in the Vietnam War and these, these really tough guys. And it's now, now the Vietnam veterans, for instance, are definitely older and maybe don't look like they're in the best shape anymore. If I see anybody with a veteran's hat on or law enforcement, anything like that, I will go out of my way to thank them because of all that they did and continue to do for us. And so I, th I think about that and I think, you know, there's so much experience, there's so much life. I see these pictures of my, back in the 70s, you know, women with their, their hot pants and their long hair and people with their really fun, cool cars. And it's like, hey, 
you know, we were the cool group, okay? Everybody thinks they're the cool group, but we're all a cool group, no matter how old we are. And so I really hope that people will start really sharing knowledge with each other, sharing experiences with each other, and be able to teach and educate and help each other and inspire each other. So it doesn't matter how young or how old you are, okay? You have those experiences that you can help people with. And put that in your heart and look for people. You know, one thing I saw was uh, even, um, I don't agree with Halloween. I don't have anything to do with it myself, but I saw one thing that I reposted on Facebook and that was, hey, you know, when you're going out getting your treats, why don't you go to a nursing home? Take some treats there. They usually have treats to give you. And so what you're doing, especially for the kids, is they're actually looking at uh, people who've been where they are and they're blessing each other. So think about that. Even going like Thanksgiving and Christmas. I don't have family. I'm going to the Open Door Mission and serving meals on those two days. And I'm excited about it because that'll be the biggest blessing that I could experience. And so think about that with other people, places, things that you can do that are really, really, really important and will impact people's lives and help pull people out of something that may be a very deep pit for them. So you think of sink, swim, or float, surviving the tidal waves of life. And so today, are you sinking, swimming, or floating? All right, so I'm gonna be reading from my book and I'm changing some things a little bit uh, before it's published, the new one. And so I'll just be speaking with you after that a little bit. So what happens happened to you up until this point in your life, no matter how old you are, that has put you in one of these three pools, either below water sinking, you're floating, you're barely surviving, or you're thriving. So what does it take to bring you for, from gasping at the bottom of the lake to powerfully racing across the pool of life? Okay, can take a lot of work, but it's worth it. So let us explore the transition from drowning in the sand pit of life to swimming for the gold. When people swim for the gold, they spend like oh, all day, every day working on that because they're focused and that's what they're focused on. And that's what we have to focus on too, is going for the gold. Because when we let everything around us distract us, we've lost our focus. You know, where the, where the <clears throat> attention goes, the focus, the energy flows. And so we have to be really careful with that. So let's explore your transition from drowning in the sand pit of life to swimming for the gold. Like I said, it's time to mentally inflate. Think of that, mentally inflate your arms with strength. All right, just think about that as you're swimming in, in life. Put fins of faith on your feet. Just think of fins of faith on your feet that you could put on there that would help you to rise to keep going upwards, okay? And especially if you watch deep sea divers and their fins as they go up, fins of faith on your feet. And don the goggles of commitment to your vision. It's easy to lose our commitment when things happen in our lives, things push us off a different way, but then we have to get back to that commitment of life and what we are planning to do with it, to catapult yourself over every hurdle. And the thought that came to me this morning when I was thinking about this was, you know, you see in those old movies from, what, 13, 14, 1500s or something like that, and maybe there would be a big wall of protection around a city or something like that, and there were these, uh, I don't know what you'd even call them, but things that they created so they could put these great big boulders on there, the soldiers could put those boulders on there, and they could catapult these big rocks, big arrows, whatever, over the wall, to get to their goal on the other side of that wall. And so when I think about catapulting, a lot of times that's what we have to do is we have to shoot over that wall. And so we can do that. We just have to keep our faith and trust and move in that direction. So what I put here was diving into the glistening pool of strength, dignity, yes, dignity. We have to dignify ourselves and the power and limitless hope. So that all takes a lot of visualization to do that. Everyone who um, has claimed a, a pageant title, every famous sports person, Olympics person, musician, whatever the case may be, has literally visualized over and over, all day long, every day sometimes, their success, what they're doing. 
so that when they get on the stage or they get on the slopes or they get on the court or wherever they are, it's so natural to them because that's all that's been going around in their head. It's, it's so natural. They just keep thinking of it because they've, they've created that winning streak in their mind to the point that that's just natural. They can't even think about failure at all. And so think about that. And um, there was a lady, I'm trying to think of her name right now, this thought just came to me, who um, was uh, really trying, she was a teenager, and she was, I think, 17, no, she was 16, and she was um, swimming. She was doing swimming for competitive swimming at her school, and she always was the last one to reach the finish line. Because in her mind, she kept thinking, everybody's going to be in front of me. Everybody's succeeding. They're faster than I am. I, you know, and so that's what happened. And then her grandmother talked to her, and he, she made it very clear to her, no. It's like, you're winning, you're winning, you're way ahead. And she talked her into thinking only that she was going to be victorious, that she was a winner, that she was ahead, that she was the fastest one. I'm the fastest one. I'm the fastest one. And so then when she finished that race, and by the way, by the time she decided to enter that one, her age group was filled up. So she had to take the next higher age group. The girls were a little bit more advanced, and she thought, oh my gosh, here we go. No, I'm going to remember what my grandmother said. You're the fastest, you're the fastest, you're the fastest. And so she did the race, and she got back to the finish line, and she looked around and was like, there's nobody here. I'm so far behind, they've already gotten out of the pool. And her coach looked at her, and she said, do you realize you just won? against the older girls and then there the other swimmers were they weren't beside her they were behind her because she had totally changed her mind it was Lisa Nichols that was her name <laughs> she had totally changed her thoughts and turned them into victory thoughts I'm the fastest I'm the best and so she was that totally turned her life around and now even though later on she'd become a very poor single mom now she's a multi-bazillionaire because she teaches other people how to visualize and how to go forward and to look at what they can do once they set their mind to do it and they switch their thoughts around. And I know I've talked before about brain jujitsu. Ju and you know, in jujitsu, people are like flipping each other around to, to win, to take control. And a lot of times we have to do that with our brains. We have to flip those thoughts. And I've been working on that a lot lately because of things that I've been through again. And um, it's, it's really amazing. It's like, no, no, I'm not gonna think about this. I am not going to let that continue to bother me and to pull me down. So you have to flip it into just the opposite. So if you think, you know, I'm a, I'm a failure, I'm worthless, whatever. No, I'm a beautiful child of God. He gave me a brain. I can see, I can hear, I can walk, I can talk, okay? Um, even even if you don't like where you live right now, hey, you've got a lot of blessings going on. And so I've been working a lot on brain jujitsu, and I would encourage anyone who's struggling with that to do the same thing. Stop right away. No. Sometimes I get mad. I say, no, I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm not going to let that determine where I go from now on. Nope. I'm flipping that thought. And think just the opposite until it becomes so natural that you don't have those thoughts banging on your head anymore because you've gone beyond that. So think about that, Limit, limitless hope, and you have to visualize. Might be kind of hard at first because if we've never experienced some of those things, how can we visualize them? So then you start listening to testimonies of other people with no arms, no legs, all kinds of things. You know, living, living on the street as drug addicts and turn into very successful people ministering and teaching. So nothing in life can really destroy us. I was watching the other day a guy who had no legs. He didn't even have any stumps that you could put prosthetic legs on. And he's working to support his family. And he's working in a, a garage where there's like big trucks and tractors and stuff like that. And he's wheeling himself with one hand while he's pushing these great big tractor tires. And he's doing his work. I see people like that all the time that have no legs and they're, they're moving on their hands and their trunk, and they're carrying things maybe around their neck, whatever, and doing jobs. And so we can do whatever we set our minds to do. It's just, where's this going, all right? So think about that. And so then also, it's like, if you feel like a fish out of water, stop. 
change directions. Remember what I said earlier about you can't change your destination overnight, but you can sure change your direction overnight, and so change directions. I'm doing that again, and a lot of times we have to keep doing that in our lives. And so it's find a new river to swim in. What's that new river? It could be a new job that you know you're really qualified for, but I'm afraid it could be new relationships. Why well, speak about that a lot because it's so important. It could be new steps for health. So find a new river to swim in. I joined a group uh, for health and life on Facebook and people are suggesting so many things, telling people to look at this and look at that. And it's things that will change our gut biome, that will change our minds, that will change our health, change our lives. Because most of what we're eating nowadays is really pretty toxic according to scientific studies. And so um, that group is really helping me to refocus on things that I can do to feel better, feel stronger. And so I would encourage you too, that's a, that's a new direction to go. Take the time. Most of the time now in the evenings, I'm just not watching movies. I'm watching doctors, psychologists, uh, health and relationship coaches, well-known people. And it's like I'm studying usually almost every night on life-changing things that we can do, attitudes that we can change. And I would really much encourage you to do that because it's amazing what you can learn and how you can relate differently to people, especially ones that are maybe giving you a tough time. It might be things that they're doing, it might be things that you're doing. I see things that I can certainly change, thoughts that I can change by spending the time to do that. And it's been very motivating, it's been rewarding, so I would just encourage you to try to do something like that. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm actually almost led by God to a certain person on YouTube that I wasn't even thinking about or knew about, and what they have is profound, and it's really, really helpful. So just you know, kind of let God guide you too into the programs and the things that you need to hear, learn, follow, to really transform your life as well. So you're not sinking any longer. You're getting to that, you know, we <laughs> getting past the floating stage into going forward with your life. And so sinking at the bottom of the pool of what? failure. I always had the fear of failure, rejection, and abandonment rule a lot of my life, and so it did. And so think about that, though, when we're feeling like we're at the bottom of the pool of failure. It's murky. It's uh, really tough to be in. So it is a profound experience when you discover a trigger from an earlier point in your life that may have set it on a course far below what you want and deserve. There are triggers everywhere. Once you really learn about triggers, you start watching for them, you start recognizing them. And if there's a song that plays something as simple as that, but it reminds you of a time that you had a good time and then your heart was broken or a trigger of some abusive words that were said and you hear somebody else say it, maybe not even to you, and that's a trigger. And it brings us back to that point of that happiness, that sadness, that anger, that rejection, that failure, whatever it is. And so it brings it back to that point. Be really watchful of triggers because they happen all the time. So are you going to let that trigger affect you or are you going to do the brain jujitsu and turn it around? That does not matter to me anymore. That's not part of my life anymore. That trigger has no influence on me whatsoever. So think about that, okay? Because that's really, really important because a lot of times it does set us on a course for way below what we deserve. It did me. And it's like, no, I don't care how old I am now. I mean, I do, <laughs> but uh, I, it's like, no, life goes on and we let go of that and we keep moving forward. So, you know, when I was five and I was really, really sick and I probably shared this one other time and uh, my dad wouldn't let anybody drive, including my mom, and so she said, Rita's really, really sick. I, we need to take her to the doctor. And he said, no, I'm going to go to the horse races in Grand Island. And so you'll just have to take her on the bus. OK. In the scheme of life, that wasn't really that horrible. OK. It really wasn't. But in my little mind, as I'm sitting on the bus, and every time I've gone through any kind of counseling, it always took me back to that same spot of sitting on the bus with my head down, thinking, you're worthless. Horses are more important than you. you, you you're of no value. It doesn't matter how sick you are. You're not as worthy as a horse, okay, or a horse race. And so I know that's kind of a small thing, but in my little mind at the time, it told me that I was unworthy. 
I wasn't worth anything. I was of less value than a horse race. And that planted seeds in my mind that steered my life in negative directions most of my life. I know it kind of sounds kind of silly because people who've gone through a lot harder things have really come out and been victorious. But a lot of, you know, even I've read that more than once that even in the womb, sometimes if there's a lot of fighting, a lot of screaming, a lot of anger about being pregnant with this baby, that it actually somehow feeds into the baby and it can affect, affect them later in life. That sounds pretty crazy too, but it's been scientifically proven. And so we want to think about that. And um, what kind of impression, what effect did that have on us or on someone else? It's only been probably 10 years or so that I was actually able to um, think of my father in a more positive way for just how my whole life with him was. And then I think he had a really, really horrible life growing up. So did my mom. I miss my mom terribly, but you know, um, a lot of times we hold things against other people and they were actually doing the best that they could. Like me with my son and how I messed up so many years of life because of my mess. And so we can pass it down unless we get rid of those uh, generational triggers, those generational things that pass from family to family. And there's a whole lot of information on that. So think about that and how things that happen in our life can subconsciously direct where we go. And most of our decisions are made from the subconscious. If we think we're no good, then we consciously think, I can't do that. I can't expect this person to care about me. I can't try for this kind of a job. I deserve where I am. And so subconscious takes over most of what we do. And so there's a lot of learning, a lot of training that has to go with that to make your subconscious mind realize because of what you're focusing on all the time that's good, that, hey, I am good, I'm capable, I'm smart, whatever the case may be, I'm well loved, whatever the case may be. And so think about that, that, you know, those things can sabotage us if we let them. So when, you know, as a growing up and my school days and career and all that, I quit most everything I started. Why? Because a lot of people do that. It's like, well, why can't you stick with anything? It's because we're so afraid we're going to fail or we're going to be rejected by other people or we're going to be abandoned that we quit before we actually get any further. We do it first. And so it's a, it's a self-defense mechanism. I'm going to quit this before I get rejected. So I'm going to back out. That can affect people. I know people still happening to as they're older because that was so implanted into their brain. So think about that. And um, remember, like, nope, I'm not going to attract even more discouraging and depressing relationships, which will cause me to sabotage, again, situations or treatment, because the tapes locked in my brain are telling me that's what I really deserve, but they're not locked in there anymore. They've been kicked out. And, you know, there's still things to struggle with, like procrastination. It's like, hey, I have all these you know, good things to offer. I have all this talent. I have all these things to offer other people. And yet we do what? We maybe procrastinate. Because why? It's familiar. Where we are now is familiar. And it's like five, 10 years later, it's like, why am I still in the same place that I was five or 10 years ago? Because I stayed with the familiar instead of taking that leap of faith and moving out and moving forward. So think about that too. And you know, we, if we always do what we've always done, we will always get what we've always had. And that is so true. So when you look back in your life, think about, okay, if I'm in the same place as I was 5, 10, 20 years ago, what do I need to do? First of all, I need to change direction. I need time in prayer. I need to make plans on what it is that I need to do to change my life. And, and I talk about that a lot because it's, it, it means everything as far as our success and our relationships and giving up those things that are discouraging and depressing for things that are good. You know, pray for new friends. I've done that several times in my life because as life goes on, people get married, they get divorced, um, they get widowed. Some person just soars up into all this financial blessing. The other person maybe doesn't. And so at different times in our lives, we have to switch friends. Not all friends, often, but some. And so that's another thing that we need to do and not be procrastinating anymore. So life altering events, like I said, could even happen in the womb. And so we have to be very careful.
Now think about the energy that we give off. You know, I've learned so much about energy lately, and I'm not talking about the energy we have from getting enough sleep, eating the right kind of foods, getting enough exercise. I'm talking about the quantum physics type energy. Everything is built up on energy. I used to think I was kind of wacko till I started really studying more, but everything is about energy. And when we walk into a room, we feel, people, feel people's energy. We give off energy. Is it positive, negative? Is it confident? Is it caring? We feel their energy. Is it loving? Is it kind? Is it just really angry? So always think about the energy that you give off. And if you feel other people's energy is negative, don't accept it. Keep your energy strong. Keep it up no matter what you hear, what you see, what you feel from other people. And so those are just some of the things that I'll continue to talk about in the next few programs because it really is important for maintaining the hope at the end of your rope and going through the steps that you need to do to rebuild your life. So again, think about the energy. Think about what you're focusing on. Think about the direction that you're going and go forward. Talk more in the next one. Thank you.